Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my clinical biochemistry playlist. If you haven't watched the previous 30 videos in this playlist, I do not know what you're doing with your life. Is this a way to start a video? Shut up, let me do some talking. Because in the previous videos, we talked about lactose intolerance, galactosemia, reducing sugars in the urine, glycogen storage diseases, the islet cell tumors of the pancreas like insulinoma, glucagonoma, somatostatinoma, gastrinoma, vipoma. We even talked about cystinuria, cystinosis and homocystinuria. They are not the same. We talked about Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos as well as osteogenesis imperfecta. Today, it's time to talk about fructose metabolic disorders, namely essential fructoseuria, which is more mild, and hereditary fructose intolerance, which is more severe. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order. And please watch my previous video titled Fructose Metabolism in my other biochemistry playlist where we talk about the basic stuff. Back to basics, your diet is carbs, proteins, or fat. After you digest the carbohydrates, you get disaccharides, and then you get monosaccharides. When you digest sucrose, what do you get? Glucose and fructose. The difference between the anabolic land and the catabolic land was discussed before, so we're not going over this. Just remember, glycolysis tend to be more in the insulin land because this is the feeding state. However, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis are in the glucagon or catabolic land, the fasting or starving state. You ate carbohydrates, you will digest them from the macro molecules into micro molecules. Only the micro can be absorbed, i.e. cross the membrane. From your gut to your blood. Then metabolism takes place in the liver. How do you break down stuff? It's called hydrolysis, which means adding water to break down bonds. If you just ate sucrose, then the enzyme sucrase in the brush border of your intestine will break down the sucrose, the disaccharide, into one glucose molecule, which is a monosaccharide, and one fructose molecule, another monosaccharide. Fructose is commonly referred to as fruit sugar. Do you remember when we talked about galactosemia and lactose intolerance? Yeah, galactose is an aldo sugar has an aldehyde group. How about glucose? Also an aldo sugar, an aldehyde group. However, fructose is a keto sugar, has a ketone group. I don't care about basic chemistry. Doofus, listen, this is why you see cataracts in patients with galactosemia, but you do not see cataracts in patients with essential fructosuria or hereditary fructose intolerance because there is an enzyme called aldose reductase that will give me sorbitol bad for the lens of the eye or galactitol bad for the lens of the eye these people will get cataracts but the aldo reductase aldehyde cannot work on a keto sugar because it's called an aldo reductase not a keto reductase and since fructose is a keto sugar Fructose cannot be converted into fructitol. Have you ever heard of fructitol? No, never, because it does not exist. So the moral of the story is patients with galactosemia can get cataracts, but patients with fructose metabolic disorders do not get cataracts. After digestion, there is absorption. How do I absorb fructose? You will need GLUT5. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go to the first border. On the first border, good old secondary active transport. Secondary to whom? To the primary sodium potassium ATPase. You actually spend ATP here by ATPase, and then depending on this energy release, this transporter will operate. Sodium is already going in, sodium is gonna take another doofus with it. That doofus could be a glucose, a galactose, a fructose, an amino acid, etc. If you decide to take fructose at the luminal border or the brush border, then you will have to leave fructose down gradient with a carrier protein known as GLUT5, key mnemonic, fructose GLUT5. Fructose metabolism, quick review. This was discussed in great detail in my other biochemistry playlist. 
Here is sucrose, disaccharide, commonly referred to as table sugar. By an enzyme called sucrase will be broken down into a monosaccharide and another monosaccharide. Glucose, commonly called grape sugar, found in grapes, and fructose, commonly referred to as fruit sugar or honey sugar. Honey, I have a headache tonight. No, I'm not taking any cyclooxygenase inhibitor. Most people do not get my jokes because they do not read pharmacology. Here is fructose, then what? Well, by fructokinase, what does kinase do? It's an enzyme that adds a phosphate. Let's add a phosphate group at carbon number one of this hexose sugar. So fructose becometh fructose 1-phosphate. Why do I need to do this? Because when fructose enters the cell, fructose can simply leave the cell again. Oh, what's the point then? No point. Therefore, you have to trap fructose inside the cell so that you can work on it and metabolize it and use it as a source of energy. How can I trap it? With phosphorylation because phosphorylation fixes stuff. If you want to be sophisticated about it, the door on the cell will open to fructose, but it will not open to fructose 1-phosphate. So when you convert fructose to fructose 1-phosphate, it will not be recognized by this receptor door and the cell will not open to let that fructose 1-phosphate back again. Now fructose 1-phosphate is trapped into the cell. You can work on it by an enzyme known as aldolase B, aka fructose 1-phosphate aldolase B. Why do I call it aldolase? Even though fructose is a keto sugar. That's a very good question because of what cometh after it glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. As for the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it can help me with lipogenesis to make triglycerides, big fat molecules, which we can store for a later day. Fat is a very dense source of energy. That's why it's the favorite way of your body to store energy, because it gives you nine kilocalories per gram. That's why if you eat a lot, you become more obese. Why did the body decide to store that energy in the form of fat? Why not in the form of glycogen, which is a carbohydrate? Why not in the form of protein or muscle mass? Because carbohydrates and proteins only give you four kilocalories per gram, but fats give you nine. Fat is more dense. That's why the body loves to store energy in the form of fat, it's more efficient. And since we live in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses, the body has to economize. That was the DHAP story, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Remember, acetone and the ketone bodies include what? Acetone, so get the link. Next, glyceraldehyde will become glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by an enzyme known as triose, because this is a three carbon molecule, kinase, an enzyme that adds a phosphate. In this case, we added phosphate to carbon number three. What should I do with this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate? It's up to you. You can use me for the now, glycolysis, or you can save me for the morrow, glycogen synthesis. If you want a source of energy right now, then burn it, glycolysis, and get your ATP. But if you want to save it for a rainy day, then convert it to glycogen and store it in the liver, for example. So let's summarize the normal fructose metabolism. We have two steps. Step number one, fructose got phosphorylated to fix it inside the cell by making fructose one phosphate, thanks to an enzyme known as fructokinase. Step number two, fructose got fractioned into two three carbon molecules thanks to an enzyme known as aldolase b all of this was normal now are you ready for the abnormal we have two common diseases relatively common essential fructosuria and hereditary fructose intolerance which one is more severe let me tell you suppose that i have essential fructosuria by the way what does the word essential mean it means uh, functional, it means primary, it means idiopathic, it means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. It means we have no idea why it happened. That's where it got its name from. Because when doctors uh, do not know, they do not just admit it and say, this is fructosuria and I do not know why. They have to invent a clever word, functional, essential, idiopathic, primary, idiosyncratic, and stuff like that. 
Heterophis heterophis. If I have essential fructosuria, I lack the fructokinase enzyme. Who's gonna accumulate and pile up anything before the enzyme, proximal to the enzyme? So fructose will go up. Now, is fructose trapped on the cell? No, fructose can come in and can just leave. So that's not a severe disease. But look what's gonna happen if I have hereditary fructose intolerance. This enzyme aldolase B is toast, which means anything proximal to it will go up. I'll have accumulation of fructose 1-phosphate and of fructose. Fructose is no big deal because it can just leave. But fructose 1-phosphate inside the cell is trapped. It will accumulate and accumulate and accumulate every time I drink juice, I eat honey or fruits. Accumulate in every cell you can imagine, especially liver cell, remember? Remember that digestion occurs in your gut in the vicinity of the portal venous circulation. And all of this lovely stuff that you ate is gonna end up in your liver by the portal vein. So accumulation of fructose 1-phosphate in my liver will give me hepatomegaly, jaundice, or even cirrhosis. Cirrhosis or fibrosis of the liver can give me vomiting, esophageal varices, caput midosi, and hemorrhoids. Do you think this poor patient can get enough ATP from the food? No, fasting hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia? Why are we speaking about glucose? Because look, this fructose was supposed to become glucose. Oh, now I get it. Fasting hypoglycemia. Or just hypoglycemia. Accumulation of fructose 1-phosphate in my kidneys can lead to kidney damage. Kidney damage will make the kidney unable to excrete uric acid, which means uric acid will accumulate in my blood, hyperuricemia. Moreover, what is being trapped in the cell? Fructose 1-phosphate. Say it one more time. Fructose 1-phosphate. Oh, you're accumulating all of the phosphate inside the cell, leaving less phosphate available to make ATP. Oops! Lack of energy, fatigue, drowsiness, dizziness, low ATP and high AMP, as well as hypophosphatemia, because all of the phosphate is trapped in a molecule known as fructose 1-phosphate. So, to recap, the two fructose metabolism diseases are essential fructose urea, which means we'll see some fructose in the urine, as well as fructosemia some fructose in the blood. By the way, the classic cheap urine dipstick test only detects glucose in the urine, not fructose. So do not expect this cheap test to be positive. If you want a positive test result, send the urine to the lab and order more elaborate tests. Hereditary fructose intolerance is usually autosomal recessive inheritance. The enzyme deficiency is aldolase B. Every time this baby eats honey, fruit, or drinks juice, all of these symptoms happen, which include hypoglycemia, vomiting, expect hepatomegaly and jaundice on physical exam, lab results may be positive for hyperuricemia. Also, don't forget that anytime I have elevated AMP level, that this can result in uric acid formation. Go back and check out my video called purine metabolism to see where uric acid comes from, metabolically speaking. How can I manage a patient with hereditary fructose intolerance Please avoid fructose. Oh, that makes sense because I cannot metabolize it because I do not want to accumulate any more fructose 1-phosphate. Please avoid sucrose. Oh, because it gets metabolized to fructose. That makes sense. Please avoid sorbitol or anything that includes sorbitol. Why is that? Because sorbitol can also be metabolized to fructose. Remember that glucose and galactose are aldo sugars, but fructose is a keto sugar. Again, why is that important? Because there is an enzyme known as aldoreductase that only works on aldehyde sugars, such as glucose or galactose. Glucose will become sorbitol, galactose will become galactitol. If it ends in all, it as an alcohol group. Alcohol is hydrophilic, water-soluble, and it loves water. It loves to attract water because that's sugar. It's called osmosis. Sugar can attract water. That's why patients with diabetes or any patient with hyperglycemia can also have a polyuria and increase urine volume because that sugar is heavy and it's gonna pull water into the urine or pull water into my lens. That's not good because it will make my pure translucent lens opaque called cataract. Can this happen in a patient with diabetes? Absolutely. 
Can this happen to a patient with severe classic galactosemia? Absolutely. But can this happen to a patient with fructose urea or hereditary fructose intolerance? Absolutely not. Because fructose is a keto sugar, not an aldo sugar, which means uh, words cannot hurt me. Aldose reductase cannot reduce me. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. The moral of the story is children born with fructose urea do not have cataracts and they have milder diseases than their galactosemia counterparts who do have cataracts. Please refer to my previous video on lactose metabolism to learn about lactose intolerance, mild galactosemia, and severe or classic galactosemia. Remember, these patients have cataracts, especially the classic galactosemia. That's a very ugly disease. Hereditary fructose intolerance is not fun, but it's less severe than the severe classic galactosemia. Because here we have no cataracts, and now you know why. Because fructose is a keto sugar and not metabolized by an aldo reductase. If your wonderful professor explained it like this, I will retire from YouTube and work for a garbage company. Patients with severe classic galactosemia can have gram-negative sepsis, such as E. coli sepsis, which is a gram-negative. Learn how to treat gram-negative bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites by downloading my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectgenetics.com. It comes with 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, of course. My Perfect Schnell's Ultimate Notebook, a humongous PDF to help you learn these antibiotics, and a mind map to help you memorize them. If you're struggling with pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and all of these crazy graphs of elimination, half-life, etc., download my General Pharmacology course. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the Join button, choose the highest tier, for instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Genetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.